Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll talk about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going in this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you try that, you'll definitely want to hit that subscribe button. It's taken me two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, lots of money lost, lots of pain. But over time, I became profitable. And I think over time, you will as well, if you're not already. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at NASDAQ. Uh, previous updates, I said that I was looking for us to roll over and make a basic, basically pull back, have a correction on NASDAQ and ES down to a FIB retracement. And we did get the top June 16th, I think at least. Uh, we have started to kind of trend down, break some, some lows, but there's not enough damage yet to be really confident in us shifting our bias to the downside. And I'll show you reasons why. If you just take a look at NASDAQ, we're on the daily chart, left to right, we're only going up. We have a swing low all the way down here from June 8th, and we have a higher swing low as of right now. Now, I know there's some news out with Russia, and it looks like we may have a gap down in futures, a small gap down, and maybe we come out and take this, this swing low out on Monday. But as of right now, if we just take a look at this, it's still bullish, and realistically, there's no reason to be confident in any shorts, even though I said that I was looking for us to roll over and look for shorts. What I want to see now is if we can now break this swing low and then have a fib retracement up, I would like to take that short entry and target these lows down here. So let's take a look at what I'd be looking at. Basically, uh, I want us to break this swing low at uh, 14,950. And then depending on where we bought them, uh, basically look for a fib retracement. So let's say we go down to about 14,920. Maybe we just undercut it a bit uh, early in the week and then rally up to have a bounce. I'd be looking at a first entry at about 15,200 to short NASDAQ, uh, and then maybe get in some ads at the 618 or the 70. So we could we could undercut these lows and then have a bounce back up, come into 15,200, possibly as high as 15,300, and then continue to the downside. This is what the short setup would look like. As you can see, we would basically cut down, undercut these lows. I would wait, I wouldn't get in on this dump, First, there's support here to the left, so maybe we come down here, we find some support, bounce up, then we get in at the 50% retracement from the sell-off, start shorting there, so maybe, you know, and if we come up a little more, we get another add in at 15,300, but stops are gonna be above this high, so basically, we have a 300 point stop, and our TP is, is close to 800 points. This is, is the short setup I've been waiting for, this is a short set I'm really leaning towards, uh, I'd like to see this, but again, I can't really jump in and get too excited about any shorts right now until we break the trend of making higher lows. In terms of ES, ES has actually been breaking down a little more. It's been a little weaker. However, again, same situation. We're kind of close to this support here to the left. I like that there's this fair value gap here on the daily chart. I think we could possibly revisit this before we have some serious downside if we were to have serious downside. So same idea, there's some support here. So maybe Monday we gap down, we push down to about 43.60. Uh, we find some support at 43.60 and then get the bounce up into the fair value gap. That would be an awesome entry for a short. So again, let's say we push down to 43.60 before getting any major bounce. Well, it would look like this. We pull up the 50% would be at 44.28. The 618 would be at 4441, which is in confluence with the fair value gap on the daily chart. So this would be a great entry. I'm most likely looking to focus on NASDAQ for this trade because it's just been so much stronger that I think once it rolls over, it'll have a bigger percent pullback. That's just my thoughts. So uh, in ES, we have been coming down, but it, again, technically speaking from left to right, there's nothing really shortable until based on market structure there's really no short setup until we break 4307 so even this is not even supposed to be a short setup i just think that we will have more weakness and we'll start to pull back and i'll show you the reasons why but again uh, with this trade at least now we basically be risking 56 points to go for about 135 points so again close to about a 2.5 r and i think that we it, we'll get down there early july maybe mid july at the latest and then probably just cycle back up and push back up to new highs from middle of July into the end of August. That's what I'm expecting. Nothing crazy, nothing huge, but these are the two trade setups I'm looking at. So for a ES, 
basically looking for a bottom around 4,300 or just below. And then on NQ, basically looking at a bottom at about 14,400 or just below. I showed this in the last video. This was what happened when you raise the debt ceiling, liquidity decreases, and this is actually the effects that we're seeing right now. Uh, basically, you'll see that the debt ceiling last time got increased around the Wednesday, December 15, 2021. We went a little lower on the TGA, and then one week after this low in the TGA is right here, December 29th, there was a top in the market, and then we had an aggressive sell-off for the next month of January. Same setup right now, it got passed around this Wednesday, May 31st. The next week we went a little lower, June 7th. Then the next week was a top, right around, this was June 14th and the top was June 16th. So then basically implies from about middle of June to middle of July, that whole next month, we have a significant decline. Here's exactly what I just went over. Right here was the day that Biden signed the agreement on the debt ceiling. We sold off for a few days, but then ripped up, made a new high about Less than two weeks later, so about 12 days later, made a new high for one week, went down a bit, but basically kind of chopped around. And then the week after that went down a lot and the next week out down a lot for the whole month. So the high was, let's say, end of December. By end of January, we were much, much lower. Uh, to be exact, from the high to the low on NASDAQ, we were down 17%, but that's because we were also in a bear market. I think now we actually are in a bull market for the short time being. So I don't think this this pullback will be that aggressive, but it could be uh, with NASDAQ, we could see like a six, seven, eight percent pullback. And that's kind of what I'm implying with the 14,400 target on NASDAQ. So let's go take a look at what that looks like today for the same situation. Biden signed the, the agreement on the weekend between uh, Friday, June 2nd and Monday, June 5th. It was actually on the third. So the high was the same day of the agreement, the first market day. We sold off a bit, then we ripped up to a new high. Uh, the new high was June 16th, uh, which is about 12, 13, uh, 12 or 13 days after he signed it. Same exact situation I just explained earlier at the all-time high top. Then the next week we chopped around but kind of drifted lower. Look what we did this week. We kind of chopped around but we drifted lower. Uh, and then the week after that was kind of just a straight shot a down move. And then uh, next week's was down. Uh, and it was one month after the high that we were down a lot. So one month after the high of June 16th is about July 16th. Uh, that basically marks the bottom and that would be a good viable bottom most likely. So this is another reason why I think that uh, we'll have cons we'll have more downside and I think that longs will be sketchy on all, all the indexes actually. But um, I think ES will hold up a little more. I think NQ will, will sell off the most. And here is the put to call ratio that I've been following to mark all tops. Here is the August high of the put to call ratio. It's at a low. That was the top. And then here is also the February 2nd top in the market. That was a low for put to call ratio. This one, uh, it, it caught me off guard because it dragged down a lot more. So that's why I thought that we would have a top in the market around June 2nd, but we went on for two more weeks and that's why I couldn't really get in short, but then boom, we have a bottom of put to call ratio and a big move off of those lows. So that to me really makes me think that June 16th was the top. And then now for the next four weeks, this put to call ratio will rise up to that 1.0 area. Uh, and then, then we can start to think about possibly looking for longs because uh, shorts are risky at 1.0, but for the time being, uh, longs are risky because we're so low in the put to call ratio and we've kind of bottomed in it, we push up. I don't use any indicators, I just trade off of market structure. Sometimes I use some FIB retracements and we're basically gonna be staying away from following divergences that much because as an example, the dollar, uh, the dollar was pushing up a lot as the market was rallying and it went on for a very long time. Previously, it didn't work like that and that divergence kind of broke and that, that caused me to have some unnecessary losses trying to short because I thought that we were turning in the market but we kind of just ripped higher. You'll see SPX with HYG. I was following this for a while and it had been working all the past years but then sometimes things stopped correlating. So you'll see HYG had been going down but the market had been going up and then this is where I thought that we would have a sell-off. We had a very small sell-off and then boom, ripped higher. HYG kind of broke the trend and then it's happening again where HYG is really breaking down below these lows. So then this makes you think, okay, well, if we are below the low, typically if we went below this low of January 7th, then in the future, SPX would actually fall and break that low. That's basically how HYG had worked in the past. But because of this, and it just caused me some unnecessary losses, it's harder for me to trust this. Maybe this time it does work and we do sweep these lows as the next target because HYG did break these lows. Totally possible, but 
I'm not putting my weight in it anymore because like I said before, I'd been following the divergences, they were working, trading was going good with that, but then sometimes correlations break and you can just keep suffering unnecessary losses. So I'm just gonna focus on the market structure. I was following equal weight. So you see there was a divergence on equal weight while SPX was going higher. And I thought this would lead to a sell off, but we actually just ripped higher and then the equal weight went up and broke these highs and had a really big push. Obviously recently RSP is falling off, but so you know you can't always trust divergences. That's what the lesson of today is. Basically just to conclude this video guys, all I want to say is I'm following the price action. I'm not using any divergences and right now that the price action is bullish, but I think that we're topping out because of liquidity, because of the put to call ratio. I think that we will now trend down. I think the target for NASDAQ in the next three weeks is actually 14,400. And I think the target for uh, ES in the next three weeks is, is 4,300. That's gonna conclude this video. Get, please give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what you wanna see more of and I'll see you in the next video.